1,000 only. Every episode, I complete a task of 1,000 things decided by the community. Yes, that's right. You have the power to shape the future of my account by voting on various polls released on my channel. So choose wisely, because the obtained loot will be used to prepare for the next video. Are you ready? Let's begin. Welcome everyone to another episode of 1000 Only. In the previous episode we killed 1000 Barrows Brothers and I was incredibly lucky at receiving rare drops. Let's hope we can do that again today because I checked the poll results and Moons of Peril are the clear winner in this episode. Thank you all once again so much for voting. That is really what makes this series interesting to me so please keep that up. If you don't want to miss the next poll, make sure to subscribe to the channel and simply turn on all notifications so you'll get notified when I post one. Anyway, back to the Moons of Peril. I will complete 334 runs because each full run equals 3 kills. This means that after 333 chests I will have 999 kills and to finish it off I will choose one moon to kill to hit 1000. In this activity I only need melee gear and weapons in 3 different styles. Defense is also very important because it greatly reduces the damage we will take. So I decided to buy a Serpentine Helm, Torture Amulet, Obi Cape, Zemi Spear, the Dual Makua Weapon and a Dragon Fire Shield. Before I was able to dive into the kills, I needed to complete some prerequisites. The first one was Barbarian Training to learn how to equip Hastas. This was so I can wield the Zemirakian Hasta. Next on the list were a bunch of quests, so I did Children of the Sun, Twilight's Promise and last but not least, Perilous Moons, the direct requirement. Moons of Peril is by some called Barrows 2. I can see why, because you do a similar activity by killing some ghosts and looting a chest afterwards. Of course here we only kill 3 per run instead of 6 at Barrows. The dungeon is designed in a way that you never have to leave if you don't want to. After each run you can gather new food and potions to prepare for the next trip. And it's pretty OP food as well, so really worth doing. I think the minigame in itself is not too hard because you always follow the exact same pattern. The more you learn where to stand and what to do, the easier it gets. You need to defeat the Eclipse Moon, Blue Moon and Blood Moon. Every boss has a basic passive effect and two special attacks. The Eclipse Moon can lower your max hit with its passive attack, has a special attack that summons multiple ghosts where you need to face in the right direction and a special moon shield attack you need to stand behind while it moves to prevent taking damage. The Blue Moon can stop you from attacking a couple hits, has a special that takes away your weapons and you need to retrieve them by kicking ice chunks and a special attack that summons a storm where you need to lift the braziers to prevent the boss from healing. The Blood Moon heals itself every time it manages to hit your character as a passive effect and has a special attack that makes blood rain fall you have to evade and a Jaguar special attack where it heals off the damage you take or heal yourself if you attack the Jaguars in the right timing. On average it took about 8 minutes to do one complete run, so do that times 334 and well I don't want to think about it too much. Let's go and show some loot. Okay, so we start off by looting the chest because after we completed the quest we already killed all the three moons so that means we can go for the first KC and what will it be? Not too bad, we got these darts and nice water orbs, hair landers and super compost. Alright, cool. I think I'm just gonna put that in a bank straight away, I'm not sure what I should do here. Yep, we're gonna put it in the bank because then I can keep going for as long as I want. Okay, then it's time for the second chest, can we get a unique this time? Nope, but that's okay. Chest number three is not that great. Here we go, it's time for another chest. And we get arrows, uh, bones, bone shards and some soft clay. Not the best drop overall, I think. All right, and what do we get? A lot of stuff, but not too great. Chest number six, nothing. Wow, this is the most terrible drop so far. <laughs> Chest number 9. And we get nice water orbs. We are about to go for chest number 10. And we get more regular loot. So in 10 chests I got about 400,000 loot, but that is without any uniques. So we are going to make some money, that's for sure. But let's hope we can get a bit more lucky. 
Okay, so I noticed that I'm not really using my light bearer inside this dungeon and I think the next best ring I can buy here is the ring of suffering. It gives a lot of defense bonuses and it really helps in this mini game. but I don't have enough money so for that we're gonna sell the tormented bracelet which we are not using today. So let's go and sell that and then buy back the uh, ring. Here we go, I bought a thousand rings of recoil, let's put that in the ring of suffering. And there we go, 40k. By the way, I don't have the points yet to imbue the ring, so soon I may actually want to go and do an episode where we focus on getting points to imbue items like a Berserker Ring or this ring or any other item that needs an imbue. And there is kill number 14, loot number 15. And here we go. The very first piece, the the Blood Moon chestplate. Not sure what it's worth. Let me check it out. Examine. That's a nice 2 million in the pocket right there. Awesome. Can we go for the back-to-back, -back, my friends? Can we do it? Nope. But this is not a bad loot. Chest number 17. All right. A U seed. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Time for chest number 21. And we get some more regular loot. Hey, it took a while, but we got another drop. The dual Makua Hutel. No idea how to pronounce it, but that's another unique. How much is that worth? Two mil. Um, yeah, cool. Very nice. Back to back. Nope, but it's a good drop. Here we go for chest number 40. And this is pretty bad. Chest number 45. More water orbs. Here we go for chest number 54. Just before the update, can we get a unique? No, it's terrible. Chest number 60. 65 water orbs. Here is chest number 65. No unique again. 65 chests in only two uniques. It's really turning around the luck. If you look at the previous episode with the Barrows Brothers, we got so many items. I think the unique chance is 1 in 14 here. So having only two is pretty bad. Hey, it took a while, but here we go, and that is not a bad loot at all. How much is that? 3.1 mil. Yes. Great, Unique. Thank you so much. Oh, I should have sent it to the bank. That's okay, though. Level 83 attack. And 107 combat. Let's go. The Eclipse Moon Helm. I'm not sure how much this is worth. I think, don't think too much. 1.2 mil. Not too bad. Not too bad. Let's go, let's bank it and keep going. So I was thinking it's a real like missed opportunity that you can't use a vial here on the water to fill them with water. Because every time I want to make more potions, I'm going to have to grab from these herblore supplies and that's very annoying to do. If I could just fill these up somewhere here, it would have made it so much easier to do this. So hopefully this could be a change that can be made. Chest number 80 is not too bad, I think. And we got ourselves another unique, the Eclipse Moon Chestplate. What is it worth? 1.8 mil. Beautiful, let's put that in the bank. Very nice, another unique. All right then, so chest number 100. It's taking longer than I thought it would, but still I'm having a lot of fun with this. So after this 234 chests to go, can we get a drop on chest number 100? No, but that's okay. 100 KC done, let's continue. I just knew I was gonna miss the level, so even for that I made this uh, canvas here on the screen, but I still missed it. But we got 90 hit points, my friends. That is a very, very nice milestone. It was about time. The Eclipse Moon Tessets, not sure how much this is worth. 1.7 mil. I think this is the worst uh, tests out of the three, but still, it's an item, so I'll take it. Thank you very much. Yo ho ho! 90 strength. That is beautiful. Kill number 111, or I mean, chest 111. It is one third of the way to 1,000 kills. No drop this time, but that's okay. 
Well, here we go. The first dupe of all the uniques. The Eclipse Moon Helm, which is, I think, 1.2 mil, if I remember correctly. Let me see. 1.12-ish. All right. Ooh, the Blood Moon Helm. What is that worth? Oh, that's only 655k, but oh well. That is now the full Blood Moon set completed. I think. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I still need the tests. Oh, and I did not put it in my bank. Ooh, let's go. Another Eclipse at the Lattle. 3 million once again. 2.9. Fair enough. Awesome. Oh, let's go. The Blood Moon Tessets. This is by far the best item you can get from these chests. So that is awesome. That is 5.5 mil. Is it that much? Wow. Yes, let's go. So this is going to be a very special chest, number 167. That is officially the halfway point of this video. So can we get something? No. But only the same amount of chests to go and then we're done. <laughs> ah, it is beautiful. A Blood Moon chest plate. Here we go, another item, even though this is the least valuable one. But still, it's a unique, so I'm happy. Thank you very much. Finally, the first blue moon piece. It took a while, 181 chests, but yep, let's go. Only three more pieces to go now. How much is this worth? 2.1 mil, that is not too bad. Here we go, just got level 82 defense. Almost missed a level, but we didn't in the end. Chest number 200. We are finally getting somewhere. Can we get a good drop? Nope. I haven't received a rare in a long time and I finally get one again, but what is kind of like annoying me is that this is the one that I got the most four times and it's worth the least of all of them. But oh well, it is a unique. So here is another drop again, the Eclipse Moon top, one mil, not too bad. All right, so here we are for chest number 300. After this, only 33 full chests to go and then one more kill. So that's actually 34 chests, but all right. Loot number 300, what will it be? Nothing too special. Well, this is the perfect drop to get, so thank you very much. I should not complain anymore. The Blood Moon test is by far the most expensive of all the drops. I'm not sure if this is an accurate price, but I think it is, so 6.3 mil. Thank you very much. Okay then, after a very, very long grind, we have made it to chest number 333, which means that I've done 999 kills in total. Let's claim the chest. No item. But what we're going to go and do now is do one more chest and then only kill the blue moon, because that's the one where I'm still missing pieces. Now, of course, there's a very small chance that we'll get something, but, you know, that's the way it is. 1,000 kills only. So let's go and do that now. And so here it is, the very last chest with only the blue moon killed. Can we get a piece? No, we cannot. All right, everyone, let's get into the loot. So this is the loot after killing 1000 moons of barrel. And I think that the loot is interesting, but I'm not sure if I would say it is worth it. Of course, we still have to do the final price check, but... Um, I wasn't very lucky with the blue moon set. We only got one piece. And as you can see, there's so many others that we got like duplicates of or, or like four times even. Um, I do think this is a pretty good activity for Iron Man accounts because you get herbs that have easy ingredients to get. Uh, grimy Hairy Landers and Grimy Irrit Leaves. Those are the only two herbs. A bit weird that you don't get any higher level ones, but I guess that's fine. But the big one here is the Water Orbs. We got 5,000 Water Orbs from this, and on the regular account, I guess it doesn't really matter. But on an Iron Man, it's super annoying to um, craft Battle Staffs that you get from a lot of PVM activities. But by doing this minigame, you can use these Water Orbs to make your staffs and get some uh, crafting experience. Uh, on a normal account, it's okay though. But these are like 1k each almost, so it's a pretty good money maker as well. We got Soft Clay, which is nice for making tablets. Um, super Compost. Some sun-kissed bones that we can use to um, make more blessed bone shards and train prayer later. But I'll get into the, that after this price check. Uh, wormling bones, swamp tar, 
maple seeds, yew seeds, and the atlatl darts. Now, this is a weird one, because if I examine this one, let me see if I can check that out here, then, as you can see, the regular price is 51 each, but the high elk value is almost 300 each. So, I'm gonna feel quite bad about selling this, I guess, but, you know, it's the way it is. I don't think I'm gonna elk them. But look at the difference. It's like 10 mil to 1 mil. That's insane. Anyways, let's go to the price check. I don't want to stretch this out too much more. So here we go. What is it worth? 44.8 mil in total. I mean, that is not too bad overall. That is not too bad overall. Very nice. So what is worth the most according to this price check? Yeah, definitely the uh, double Blood Moon Tessets. We got two of them, about 6 mil each. Of course, I hope it will sell for this price in the GE as well. But yep, there we go, 44.8 mil. Alright, so after selling everything, we ended up with 40 million. That's a lot less than we first price checked. It was really, really difficult to sell some of the items. Now, I'm not sure why that is, but it's the way it is. It is still 40 mil. What is it exactly? Oh, it's almost 41 mil. Okay, that makes it a little less bad. <laughs> but still, it's, uh, it's less than we expected. Anyways, before we get into the stats and all that, I want to train some prayer because these two items here I can't sell, but we can train some prayer with it. So let's see if it is uh, any good. I managed to get a total of 96,000 blessed bone shards. I'm gonna use them all. They're gonna be six experience each. So that's gonna be close to 600K XP. That is pretty good, to be honest. I think that's gonna get us to 75-ish. All right, let's go for it. Here we go for level 75 prayer. That is awesome. I can now wield the Elysian Spirit Shield. I just gotta make some more money. <laughs> Okay, we even made it to 76 prayer. Better than I thought. Okay then, now that we have trained our prayer level to 76, let's check out all the skills we've trained today. We trained attack from 82 to 84, strength from 89 to 91, defense from 80 to 82, of course prayer from 70 to 76, hit points from 89 to 90, one cooking level from 70 to 71, and we leveled up our combat from 106 to 109. And now we have come to the final part of the video. You may remember this from back in the day, but every fifth episode we do 1000 Slayer kills. So tomorrow you can expect a Slayer related poll. If you want me to invest in some new gear, just take a look at my current stuff in the inventory and let me know in the comments what I should buy. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and until next time, bye bye.